A concept that will be extremely useful to us is the idea of a partition of events. So a collection of events 1 to m is a partition of an event, another event b, if two things hold. One, the bi's, the, part, the, the events which will be our partition, they are all mutually disjoint. That is to say their intersection is zero unless they're the same event. That's the first thing. So one, they have to be mutually disjoint. And two, their union has to be the other event entirely. So B1 to Bn is a partition of an event B if the union of B1 to Bn is the event B. Another way of saying this pictorially is that it takes the event B and it splits it up into a bunch of small events which are disjoint. So here we've split it into five events, B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, and it's clear that the events are disjoint, they have no overlap, and their union is the entire event. One of the things that makes partitions particularly useful is that they are a, a they give us a very simple intuitive way of calculating the probability of the entire event. So let's explore that a little bit now. We'll now write down the basic rules of probability. That is to say, the rules that govern the probabilities that we assign to a given event. So the first simple rule is that the probability of an event has to always be a positive number. It can't be negative. Secondly, if we have a partition of an event B, so if we have B split up into N disjoint other events, B1 to Bn, then the probability of the event B is just equal to the sum of the probabilities of each of the individual events. So the probability of B, of B equals B1 plus B2 plus the probability of B1 plus the probability of B2 all the way up to the probability of Bn. And lastly, we need some normalization, so we decide that the probability of the entire outcome space omega is just 1. So here's a simple consequence. Notice that if B and B complement, well, and B complement here is the is everything in omega which is not in B, so the the complementary set. Notice that they're a partition of the set omega. And because of that, the probability of B plus the probability of B complement has to equal the probability of omega. Since the probability of omega equals 1, we know that the probability of B plus the probability of B complement equals 1. Rearranging this, we see that the probability of B complement equals 1 minus the probability of B. This is a simple consequence of our basic assumptions about the probability P, and it will be very useful in what comes later.